The next big step in the reassembly of the Thunderbird is here as we get all of the bodywork on the front of the car ready for paint. If you haven't already, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I slightly regret doing this job today because the ground is extremely hot, but the last thing that we need to do to finish up the work we started last episode on the Thunderbird is the suspension. I've got two new shocks to go in because we don't know what the condition of the ones in the back are. The ones in the front seem to be doing okay for the time being, but the ones in the back certainly seem a little bit flat because the whole car is sagging down pretty badly. I'm hoping this is going to lift it up just a touch. I don't expect it to do that much on the ride height, but a little bit would be nice. So that's the first job that we're going to get done today. Pop the top end out, drop it off the axle, and then build these up onto the brackets, slam it all back together, and then move further forward on the car. So the five bolts out, this is our suspension strut. As you can see, it's not doing very well. Uh, the bracket itself is on the inside in pretty good condition. You see a bit of the rust just creeping round. On the underside, as you'd expect for a Northeast American car and areas that haven't been under sealed, it has started to rust. So I'm gonna pop this apart, do the usual thing, sand it down, paint it, prime it, all the rest, put this one back in, and then we'll put it back on. Now the knot on the top of here is a 9 16 but I only have a shallow socket, not a deep one. So when I put it on, I can't get a ratchet into the top. So I'm going to have to use a pair of mole grips on the end, much as I would do with the uh, other spanner. Or if I had a spanner, to be fair, that would also do the job since that might spin. But I have a 15mm spanner and that is close enough that managed to take this off without rounding it. It wasn't too loose, which is good. So. For those watching at home, 15mm is very close to 9 16 but not vice versa. You won't get a 9 16 something uh, spanner or socket on something that is 15mm. So I'm just going to spin this off now and take the mole grips off. I'll show you how this one comes apart. Now there's two little bushes that sit on this side of the rubber at the bottom. They just pinch in so that the nut that fastens this onto the axle doesn't crush in and destroy the bush. Then on the top, very simple top mount of a big washer, a bushing, the plate, and if I can get it off, another bush and a washer. And that's it. But we don't need to reuse those because the new shocks came with new bushings for the top. All we need to reuse is the ones that go on the side, on each side of here. So to put this all back together, we just use a new fitting kit, which has two new bushes in and two new caps and a new nut. Now, if you look at the bearing, uh, the bushing on this one compared to the old one, there is a definite and significant difference in size. This one's a lot thinner. It's been compressed well and truly down. And the detent that sits through the top is also completely wrecked. So we just put one set of these on with the detent upwards first onto there. That drops in onto the top and then with the detent down through that way. This just screws onto the top. So we just tighten this to about that many foot pounds and then we can put more back on the car. Before we can put everything back on, we need to get all of the body panels sorted out, and this is by far the worst one that was on the front. We've done the other wing on the driver's side, the left side of the car, and we've done the lower valance, which were reasonably good. All things considered, they're, they're really looking not too bad compared to this one, and this is still pretty good compared to the two rear arches on the back of the car. 
This one's got a lot of bubbling down in this corner. Not really surprising, it's where all the water will trap in and it looks like it's rusted through and been bondoed because there's definitely some rust holes you can see right through underneath. And we're pretty sure that this is the one that got added onto the car after some crash, partly because it's the wrong colour on the top here, just uh, next to the, where the bare metal is and it also got brazed onto the corner. There's this big lump of brass down here that somebody's brazed on this corner, so I suspect the mounting bracket, yeah, the mount for the bottom corner has completely gone through. So maybe we'll be able to fix that as well, which would be really nice. So besides that, there's a couple other little spots, but mostly it seems to be in pretty good nick and it should just need scrubbing back, priming, and then we can get ready to paint. Now to go back on this, I'm gonna use a couple of different tools. I've got a little air grinder to get into some of the small corners. Uh, I've got some smaller pads for this as well. I think the smallest one I've got goes down to about 20 mil, which is really useful in these sections down here. And I've got my roops as well, which I can put a nice big thick 80 grit mesh pad on and just burn through all this paint and just scrub it all off. I'm gonna do it in two parts. I'm gonna do the bottom side below the, um, the shoulder line, and then I'll turn it around and do the top, because I've just put this piece of tuba one on the bench to hold it up a little bit more steady because the bench isn't really big enough. I mean, the garage isn't really big enough, but we'll see how we get. Well, here's the damage, and in place it's not actually as bad as it looked because the Bondo was lifting all the way up to here. It's only chipping it off. You know, it's never a good day when you have to use a wood chisel and a mallet on metalwork. Um, but these are some of the chips that came out. I mean, these are nearly a quarter of an inch thick in places. For the most part, across here even, it was an eighth of an inch thick. And this isn't bad metal. It's got one hole in there. But otherwise, it's actually pretty good. Down here is the real problem. It's been drilled in a lot of uh, places in order to um, allow the Bondo to really adhere through the panel to the inside and stop it just falling out. And honestly, the way some of this is, I don't really want to put too much weld or heat into it because there's in some places it's really, really thin. There's just not very much there, but it's not really enough to patch a whole piece. And I just don't have the skills to make a full round over all the way down to here and around this edge in order to do it. So I'd have to get a new lower quarter panel shipped and that's going to take weeks to get made and shipped over and everything else. So there's not really a lot I can do besides just try and smooth this out for some of the really heavy duty dents and then do my best to repair what I can either with a little bit of plate here and there or with just a bit of Bondo on the bits along here where it's really not too bad. I'm genuinely surprised it was as thick as it was all the way across this section. So in the end, I did decide to take this piece of metal out. I went over it a couple of times and taking all the Bondo out and everything else, it just got thinner and thinner and thinner and there was no way I was gonna be able to weld that in. And I really wasn't happy leaving so much crusty crud underneath any paint or indeed Bondo, which I am still gonna have to use. Now I've managed to save basically the entire front end of this panel, but there's a couple of brackets as you go further back. That makes reshaping it a little bit more difficult. I maintain that if these holes hadn't been drilled from here forwards, this would be a perfect piece of panel. There's no reason whatsoever for that to have been done. It is still gonna need a skim of Bondo, unfortunately, but that's just the nature of the beast. This panel that I've added in is a lot better, but it's still not the right curve, so it's gonna to have to bondo just to, to get that shape in. But it's definitely not gonna be a quarter of an inch thick like it was, and there's no rust underneath it. So I'll get the bondo on, and then start cleaning the rest of this further forward. Well, it's been a long time coming, getting to this position. We started doing parts of this in January this year, and things like the headlight mounts, these are actually cast aluminium. They've taken ages to get done just because there's so many little faces and trying to get them coated. I mean, I've even just found that this edge here never got painted. So I'm gonna to have to go back and redo that and then sand it all back down. But realistically, after being in storage, they're gonna to want to sand over just because of dust and, and other little bits and pieces that have got on them. So they're probably about 95% of the way done. And the last bit is just before they get painted up. 
So it could be an awful lot worse than it could be how they were when the car arrived. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we are getting a lot of people subscribing or we're getting a lot of people watching but who haven't subscribed according to the analytics through uh, YouTube. So we just need to feed the algorithm and please it. So if you can like and comment and subscribe, make sure all of those are done. And if you want to, you can go to shop.pedalbox.show and check out some shirts, hats, beanies ready for the winter, long sleeve hoodies, all sorts of things and new stuff coming as well. Check out patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show. You can support us from as little as a dollar a month. And if you'd like to support us from five or ten dollars, you get access to our Discord server where we chat more about projects. We also interact with everybody on there when we do our live streams as well, which is all really good. So do check those things out and we'll see you in the next episode, either working on the kit car, the golf, or painting this up for the Thunderbird. Thanks very much for watching.